Welcome to episode seven of Reverse the Relapse. So today we are talking about the C word, control, and why too much control is resulting in weight gain. You're in the right place if you're ready to stop the sabotage and weight regain post weight loss surgery and start losing again. Hi, I'm Georgie Beams. I'm a psychologist who specializes in the area of emotional eating, sabotage and weight regain for weight loss surgery patients. I work both in a weight loss surgery clinic as well as supporting women online to reverse the relapse. I honestly believe that psychology should be a mandatory part of everyone's weight loss surgery journey. Your body has had an upgrade to version 2.0 after surgery, but your mind has been operating at version 1.0. You're here to update your mind, to match your body and get back on your weight loss path. And I'm here to help you. So first of all, I have some really exciting news to share with you for those of you listening in Australia. Medicare has made some recent changes, which means that you are eligible to receive rebates with one on one sessions with a mental health care plan anywhere in Australia. So I'm excited to announce that I have opened up some one on one coaching spaces for those women who are wanting to upgrade their mind to version two and stop the sabotage. So click the link below if you want to learn more. So I have divided this podcast into two parts because this area of control is very, very juicy and I have a lot to share with you. Everything that I'm sharing, I wish someone had shared with me years and years ago because it would have actually you know, released so much of the pain and suffering that I had by looking in all the wrong places. So I used to believe that the more control I had over my eating, the more control I would have over my weight. Makes sense, right? So the goal for me for many, many years was how can I get more control over my eating, over my weight and over myself? But what I really didn't realize at the time is that this very goal kept putting on more and more weight. And I'll explain exactly why in this episode and in the next episode. So I've divided this into two parts. I'm going to give you some strategies. So in my head back in the day, um, you know, in theory, right, I thought, look, if I can just eat this number of calories and I can do this type of exercise and I can pop this in the app and do all the calculations, I would become skinny. Seemed very, very reasonable, you know, in theory at the time. But in reality, it was a completely different story. So what would happen is I'd start off going, you know, really, really well. I'd go shopping with my meal plans and, you know, buy all the right food and, you know, prep it and, and, you know, really sort of set myself up for success at the beginning of the week. And I'd start off being really, really good until I wasn't. So then something would happen. So either I'd have a hard day at work, um, impromptu catch up with friends uh, and, and also, you know, just social plans over the weekend. And then I'd break the diet. And then, of course, I would think, well, you know, it's broken now, so I may as well just keep eating. Right. Doesn't matter anyway. So I'd go from being in control and everything going well and feeling really good. And then something would trigger me and I'd just flip to the other side and be out of control. And then I'd either start to be good the next day, right, after I sabotaged everything once I broke the diet, or I'd start on Monday. And so I was really caught up in this whole kind of start-stop cycle, sort of starting and then the sabotage would kick in and then I'd stop again. But what ended up happening over the years is that I gained more and more weight. And, you know, I'm not sure if you can relate to this, but it was just You know, it's an awful, awful feeling of feeling stuck like, you you know, there's a part of you that's really, really trying to do the right thing and then sabotage sneaks in just so easily and then it all goes to waste and then you have to start all over again. And I think I started all over again just way too many times over the years. So what I didn't realize at the time was that it was my need to control that was making me lose control. So it's a paradox 
the more you try to be in control with your eating, trying to be good, you know, got the meal plan, got the prepping, etc., you will end up gaining more and more weight over time. So when you think about it, if this strategy of control worked and it was really effective, you wouldn't even be here now. You wouldn't have even needed surgery in the first place because the first diet that you ever went on would have worked. You would still be, you know, having that in control feeling. You'd be feeling virtuous. You would not even be listening to this podcast. So again, I'm going to save you so much suffering, you know, if you can get your head around this one and I want to take you off the path that you're on at the moment and put you on a new one, which is actually going to be more successful and effective for you. So let's unpack control in a bit more detail. So as human beings, we all have a basic need for control, right? Um, you know, children do as well <laughs> in terms of, you know, structure and needing to know what's going on, etc. But what I'm referring to here is a disproportionate need for control where it is so incredibly consuming. It takes over your life. You end up living most of your life in your head. All the to-do lists, all the counting, all the calculating, all the planning out the meals for the next week in your head before you're even there. So women who come to see me at the start describe their history with eating and their current eating to be like this. And this is exactly where I was for over a decade myself. So I totally get it. So they're working with two gears. They're either in control or They're out of control with food and their weight. So they're either good or bad. They're a success or a failure. And there's nothing in between. This is called all or nothing thinking. And I know many of you are like, yep, I can totally relate to that. Not only with the area of food, but other areas of your life. It's otherwise called black and white, black and white thinking as well, meaning that there's no gray. So let's just imagine a game of tennis for a moment. You've got one opponent down one end of the court called in control and the other opponent is down the other end of the court called out of control. And it's like you've got the playing watching a tennis match and you go back and forth and back and forth. It's a battle, right? This is an extremely stressful way to live your life. So when women are in control, they're either doing this through dieting, through their meal plans, through, you know, exercise regimes, cutting out certain food groups, etc. Or they're out of control, meaning that they're binging, they're in full self-sabotage mode, they're eating anything and everything in sight. They're feeling powerless and they're gaining weight. The issue with being out of control is that you feel like you're in a real rut. The longer that you're in the rut, the harder and harder it is to get out of it. Now, when you're in control, you often feel virtuous. And this at the time feels quite amazing, right? Being in control feels very, very seductive, kind of lures you in. So many clients, when they first start working with me, the goal is like, how can I get in control Or how can I stay here for the rest of my life, right? This feels good. Tell me, Georgie, how can I get rid of my out of control side and just stay in control the the rest of my life? And then all my problems are solved. So here's the thing. Here's the truth. We cannot stay in control for too long. It is only a short-term strategy. And this is because it's an extreme behavior, because remember, you've got one extreme of in control and the other extreme of out of control and nothing in between. And, you know, from a, as a psychologist, any extreme behavior is unhealthy and it's unsustainable. So what happens in reality is we try to be in control exactly like the example of that I gave you, you know, got the meal plans, got, you know, everything all mapped out for the week, et cetera. And it's only short term because you're only working with the two gears. So something will trigger you, you know, like if something impromptu, something popping up, cake at morning tea, you know, (laughs) anything like that. And then you end up just bouncing over to that out of control side. And then you spend more time 
in the out of control side, which leads to weight gain over time. Then you stay in that out of control side and you're in enough pain and then you start the diet again. So you go back in control. Something happens in your life. You break the diet. You bounce straight over to out of control. You might stay there for a few weeks, a few months, a few years, get in enough pain, back in control. You go back and forth, back and forth, just like that tennis match, right? It's a broken strategy. So I will share with you the new way forward in the next episode. So make sure you go there next. But right now, I just want to unpack everything for you and what's driving this level of control. So remember, this level of control is around tracking everything. It's about living in your head, your to-do list, having your life mapped out in your head all about the future. And this actually drives a lot of anxiety. What I'm really referring to here is overthinking and perfectionism. So who is with me here? Who is resonating with this? So when we are, you know, in that zone of overthinking and perfection, perfectionism and living our life in our head, it causes a lot of anxiety and it's a very stressful way to live our life. And many women don't even realize they're so disconnected from this level of stress and anxiety that they that this is creating this mindset, this thinking is creating, it's become their new norm. We're so disconnected from our body, right? All of our feelings we feel in our body and we're disconnected from our feelings. We're disconnected from our wants and our needs. And most importantly, we're disconnected from the present moment. Magic happens in the present moment. And it's very difficult to live a really rich and fulfilling life in your head because you are so disconnected. So when you think about it, you know, spending time with your friends, with your family, the best memories that you have is when you are in the present moment, which means that you are out of your head. There's none of that overthinking going on. Your awareness is in your body. And if you have listened to my other podcast episodes, you will know that your awareness is either in your head or in your body, not both. So anytime in your, you are living your life in your head, you are making a choice that you are not in the present moment. Um, let me illustrate it with an example. So we all have amazing travel stories. And one of my best traveling experiences was a number of years ago, uh, it's with two girlfriends and I was, was we we're all single at the time, uh, went over to Italy for a month and uh, we spent a week in Tuscany. And we did a self-guided bike tour around Tuscany and it was stunning. It was beautiful. It was just like you would imagine it, right? And when I was on that bike, I felt so incredibly free. I savored every minute of that experience. And, you know, I just loved it. And I look back at that time with such fond, fond memories and I can, you know, connect to those feelings as well. So let me ask you, Where was my attention when I was on the bike? Was it in my head thinking about the next part of my trip? Was it in my head thinking about the 24-hour plane trip home? Was it in my head thinking about work when I went home? Was I in my head counting calories? No, I was in my body. I was in the present moment. I was connecting with myself, with others, with nature, with life. And that's why this holiday was so incredibly special because I was in the present moment. So you can see the difference, right? And I want you to reflect, you know, in terms of those times and those moments in your life when you have been in your head and what the impact has been and when you've been in your body and what the impact has been. So when you are in your head and overthinking and caught up in that perfectionism and trying to be in control the whole time, it becomes an avoidance strategy. So just like food is an avoidance strategy, just like Netflix is an avoidance strategy, just like playing games on your phone and scrolling through social media is an avoidance strategy. Control is the same. As I said, this whole goal of trying to be in control the the whole time, it's very alluring. It's very, very seductive, but it's the wrong goal. And I know because I have been there myself, right? And it just took me in the opposite direction. It took me to living this sort of stressful life of bouncing in between 
in control and out of control. And what happened is I thought there was something wrong with me because I couldn't stay in control for very long. I thought I was flawed. I thought maybe I missed that control gene that, you know, my skinny friends had. They seem to have no, no problems with it. But it was such a big problem for me. And it was like I could you know, be successful in all these other areas of my life. But this area of my life with eating and weight was always so problematic. And I thought it was because I didn't have that control gene around food. And that is not the case at all. We all have the same amount of willpower, right? But willpower runs out at some point. It's a short term strategy. So this is this is a broken strategy of just trying to be in control the whole time. So let me talk about the transformation takeaway. Um, So as I said, next episode, I'm going to unpack the new way forward, share with you some strategies today. I want you just to sit with it and I want you to reflect on your history with eating, where you where you are, are at now in terms of eating and your weight. And I want you to think about what are you avoiding every time you try to be in control? So if you could go to your lounge room and sit down on the couch with zero distractions, no music, no TV, no phone, no people, etc., And you were to sit there and you place your awareness in your body. You got out of your head or got out of that overthinking zone, got into your body. What uncomfortable thoughts and feelings would bubble up to the surface for you? That's your homework. This is what you need to work on. So keep coming back to yourself. The answers are actually within you. We have to stop looking outside of ourselves for these answers to try to get more and more control. So thank you for being here. I am really excited to share the next episode with you and start to get into some strategies. So Come and share with me your key insights from, you know, your relationship with control, from what I've shared with you. You Come over to Instagram, foodfreedom underscore, and I'd love you to share this episode with anyone who's also struggling with their relationship with food and their weight, with this whole in control versus out of control broken strategy. So we can save them some pain as well. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next episode in the next episode in the next 